What's up everyone? Me and Krupa finally found our house, which means I get my own office. That's a big deal because I've had to put my desk in like my bedroom or in our living room the past couple of years. So today I am going to do day one of my build and I'm gonna start off with our accent wall. I'm gonna do a board and bathroom wall. Before I start painting, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fix up the wall and then go from there. So with that said, let's get into it. This video is going to be part one of my setup where I'm gonna be taking you through how I built this office and put it all together. To start off, I began with the board and batten wall by first masking off the walls I wasn't going to be painting and then repairing some of the pre-existing holes. By no means am I an expert DIY home repair person, but I do get slightly OCD about not patching holes before painting. For my paint color, I went with the wrought iron gray from Benjamin Moore. I chose to go with a flat interior paint as I love how matte finishes look, plus it's a great way at hiding wall imperfections. The drawback to this finish is that it's not as durable if it were placed in a high traffic area of the house. Luckily this is my accent wall that will almost never get touched and I'll likely not have to worry about it. Quick tip, if you have to look back at something multiple times because you're not sure if it's balanced, it probably isn't. Also, wear shoes when you're on a ladder. It's not as fun as it looks barefoot. I chose to paint the wall prior to adding the boards, but I've also seen others choose to wait to paint until everything was up. Once I was done with two coats of paint, I headed over to Lowe's to grab the boards. I went with MDF because it's fairly cheap, already primed, and it's easy to work with. To make this process easier for me, my design consisted of mainly 45 degree cuts using a miter saw. To install the boards to the wall, I used a cordless nailer with 18 gauge 2 inch brad nails. If you didn't get a nailer on Black Friday, then just do what I did and borrow it from one of your buddies that actually did. Most of my time was spent measuring and finding out where to correctly place the boards. There's probably a faster way of doing this, but to help me I used a speed square and laser level when possible. To better secure the boards, I went back around and placed nails where the studs are located. For the times that I didn't have the nailer settings correct, I used a nail punch to get the head below the board surface. To cover the nails and fill the cracks, I used spackle, which worked okay. But if I could go back in time, I would have used wood filler and paintable caulk. Once I got everything cleaned up, I was finally able to paint the boards to match the wall. I wanted to convert my desk into a standing desk, but my issue was that my desktop is very heavy butcher board, it's 8 feet long, and I'm 6 foot 3. What that means is I needed a kit that would have a solid lifting capacity and be able to get tall enough for me to use it comfortably. Luckily I found the Pro Standing Desk Frame from Autonomous which stretches up to 73 inches, which is great for what I was wanting. It can also lift up to 310 pounds and it has plenty of height.
the assembly process was pretty straightforward and once I had the legs completed I just needed to screw everything together to the bottom of the desk. It's probably recommended that you screw them together while the top is on the floor but the top is pretty hefty and I didn't want to risk scratching the floor trying to awkwardly flip it over with my fiance. Right, so with this desk, I'm able to save four different heights using the desk control system. The way you do it is adjusting the desk to the height that you want, such as how I chose to go with my sitting height and then also my standing height. I then just hold down the M until the numbers start blinking and select either one, two, three, or four for what I want to program it to. I kept my Gobi Glide wall lights from my last setup, I just needed to replace the adhesive to install it onto my new wall. With these lights, you mainly just need to plan on where the power source and wires will be located, so I placed them as close to the outlet and ground as possible and used these clips to keep the wires somewhat out of the way and in place. In my last setup, I kept my desk on my IKEA Alex drawers. I still wanted to utilize them, but unfortunately the rubber bumpers caused some damage, so I wanted to do some quick patchwork. It's not perfect, but it got the job done. I absolutely love my 38 inch LG monitor, but I wanted a little more real estate for my work. So what I did was I converted my other 27 inch LG monitor into a vertical monitor. If you haven't tried a vertical monitor in your setup yet, I highly recommend testing it out for a month or more to see how you like it. In order to mount these monitors, I still went with two budget friendly mounts that definitely get the job done, but for my 38 inch monitor, I'm highly considering upgrading to an Ergotron mount soon. All right, so right here, this wall right here, I'm going to put the pegboard that I'm going to use for a few different reasons. The main being as like a mini charging station and an area where I can like basically have easy access to a bunch of things. Mounting these by myself wasn't super easy, which is why I had to be creative with figuring out how I was going to determine where the screws needed to be placed. To perfectly space these, I just used one of the hooks I got from an Amazon kit to ensure that I could mount something across both panels. You'll want to hopefully get some of the screws into a stud, but at the very least be sure to use the drywall anchors that they come with, or else the panels will fall off fairly easily depending on what you put on it. I'm pretty sure IKEA's panel board accessories don't actually fit a board like this, so I had to get creative with some of the accessories that I chose. One of which were the trays. So I saw someone actually post a review on Amazon where they added fake turf to give it a unique look, and I wanted to try it out myself. In order to actually mount this tray, I needed to screw it in using a screw and nut. If you're not sure what size to use, just do what I did and trace the whole size and depth. Head over to your local hardware store and find what will work. Thank you. 
Not only did I want this panel board to be used as a charging station and area where I could easily access items that I commonly use, but since it also took up a fair amount of wall space, I also wanted it to work as sort of a showpiece. To help it stand out, I added some Gobi light strips. I mounted them so that the lights would face towards the inside of each panel to maximize how much of the board would actually light up without seeing the individual LEDs. To easily charge everything, I mounted this power strip, which includes three USB ports as well. I tested out the small metal hook accessory kits you can get off Amazon or Home Depot, but I wasn't a huge fan of them. I did find these coated hooks that work perfect for hanging things like my headsets, controllers, and a ton of other items. I got several comments asking how I mounted my Live Edge wood art piece in my first video. Originally I used like a jank version of a French hook system using old pieces of wood, but this time I wanted to mount it properly using this hanging system that can hold up to 100 pounds. To help it stand off the wall a little more, I used some of the extra MDF boards from the board and batten wall. On the bottom piece I added a little cushion to help prevent it from scratching up the wall. I didn't show it here, but I reapplied more RGB light strips to help the piece pop a little. This office actually has fairly high ceilings and it caused my voice to sound very echoey. So I used a laser level and installed these acoustic boards from Geek Acoustics. They actually ended up working super well for this office space. And on top of that, they look super nice compared to using traditional foam pieces. We have an extremely intimidating security guard that protects my office when needed. In order to make sure he had somewhere to sit, we got him his own little corner chair, which actually ended up being a great place for me to place our corner light. For additional storage, I still use the IKEA storage unit that has held up great since I got it. And not to show off, but I did find a trash can that matches it almost perfectly. One last tip for those of you working on your own office space that I wanted to throw in here. You may have already seen this before, but if you're struggling to hang an item like my iPhone art piece, use masking tape to draw where the holes and center point need to go. And then you'll be able to easily install the screws or nails where you're planning on putting it. All right, so there you have it. That is part one of my new office build. I'll leave links to all the items I used in this video in the description below. I genuinely hope that you enjoyed this content. If you have any tips or suggestions, just let me know down below. I'll be working on the next part of my office setup where I cover all my tech that I use and why I chose it. Be sure to like and subscribe down below. And with that said, I'll see you all next time.
Pa. Pa.